It's time for the Longines Chronoscope, a television journal of the important issues of the hour, brought to you every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. A presentation of the Longines Whitnor Watch Company, maker of Longines, the world's most honored watch, and Whitnor, distinguished companion to the world-honored Longines. Good evening, this is Frank Knight. May I introduce our co-editors for this edition of the Longines Chronoscope. Larry Lasseur from the CBS Television News staff and Kenneth Crawford, Senior Editor of National Affairs for Newsmeet magazine. Our distinguished guest for this evening is the Honorable John Stennis, Senator from Mississippi. Senator Stennis, as a member of the Armed Services Committee, you've just returned from a wide-ranging tour of our overseas military bases. Can you tell us, sir, do you think the country is now in a secure position? Well, yes, I do. I, along with Senator Case and Senator Duff, we traveled to these military installations, on the ground views of them, all the way from Scotland through England, all over France, Germany, and went through Spain and on down into Morocco, across to Tripoli and on into Turkey. And the thing that impressed me and really amazed me was the amount of actual striking power that we have there on those bases ready for action now. When I mean striking power, I mean a military installation, uh, say, for instance, an air base that has the runways, has the fuel, has the planes, has the men, pilots, navigators, and all supporting crews, and has the ammunition. Senator, what, what do you think can and should be done about home defense, that is, uh, continental defense, as well, distinct from uh, your I, I think bases? I think the best possible home defense is to have strong striking power out on these firing lines, these very places that I've been telling you about. Uh, we have those line of bases there, three deep, uh, rimming the uh, possible enemy, and I think the radar defenses of this country, continental defense as you call it, uh, those have their places to an extent. But when it comes to a choice between the two, my idea is to put our money and our time, our effort on the firing power because there's your retaliation. Well, Senator, if we really have uh, bases overseas in pretty good shape now, you think it's possible to make some economies over there on our defense? Well. I think that that will come now. We've got to continue their construction. Those bases are not all completed. They range anywhere from 95% uh, of completion down to some of them have just started. I think the physical properties must be put there. We must continue our construction program. Then we can think in terms of reducing the, the cost of operations, and the maintenance. And without weakening, without strengthening, I mean, without uh, decreasing our strength, and without weakening our military striking power there, I think we can reduce the number of men uh, that we have engaged in military action. Well, Senator, did you, did you see actually any waste over there? Well, uh, there was waste in the beginning of those construction programs, yes. Uh, there was uh, some bad management, uh, some of our military is to blame some, our contractors to blame some, but that was then in the crash landing stage of the job. I think as a whole they've done a mighty good job. Senator, a large what, part of the waste has been eliminated in that construction. Senator, what impression did you get of the progress or lack of pro progress of the European defense community and will that take some of this load off our shoulders eventually? Well, now, this European defense community, as I understand it, is the, the NATO powers and the European defense community is one unit composed of Germany and France and Italy and the Netherlands and uh, one or two others are uh, going to supply uh, military forces and then England's going to supply it and we're going to supply it. These, the plan for Germany was to have 12 divisions, not an army of our own, but 12 divisions within the European Defense Command. Now, Germany has just held an election. I think it's the big news in Europe in the last several years. They overwhelmingly carried uh, that issue to go into this European Defense Command and have the German divisions under the unified command. Now it's up to France and Italy 
they have never agreed to this plan, although it's substantially what France proposed. I think the time has come for action. I think that the good effects of the German election will be dissipated within three or four months, and this action is obtained. And unless France comes on in, puts up their part, agrees to Germany uh, being armed within these limits that I've said, I think we must have an alternative plan that will go on and put in effect uh, this plan without Italy or without France if they decide not to come in. I well, think Senator, the time for action's here and the, the elections in Germany will be dissipated on this point and much of the good effects, all of it lost unless action is had uh, within three or four months. Is that so? Well, Senator Stennis, I know you're a Mississippi Democrat, of course, but do you agree with Defense Secretary Wilson that it may be possible for us to withdraw some of our troops from overseas? Well, I agree with him to this extent. Withdraw them because other forces have been substituted and better ways of doing the same job have been learned, doing the same job with fewer troops. I, I would not want to withdraw our striking power now because I think that is the deterrent. I think it's been successful in an operation as a deterrent, and I think it's going a long ways towards preventing uh, World War III. Well, may I ask you, sir, do you think that the Russians may possibly think that this uh, ring of air bases is really an ag aggressive in, t in intent? Well, <coughs> it looks aggressive to them, perhaps. They know our record that we've never uh, gone on a program of aggression. Uh, we emphasize that now. Of course, the Russians claim that that's our purpose. I. Uh, I think they're very greatly impressed with that striking power that rims them three rims deep, all the way from these areas that I've mentioned. But I think they can argue with some logic that it is aggressive. I think they know in their mind that it, it's not primarily aggression, that we will not move unless they move. Well, sir, it's very apparent. But I do yeah. think they know we'll move with a the greatest striking power that's ever been assembled in the history of the world, if they make the first move. Senator, but aside from our military strength overseas, uh, did you gain any impression of the situation in Europe, in Europe economically speaking? Oh, yes. I, I was very much impressed with the fine economies developed there, especially uh, comparing it with four years ago when I was there. The shops were all full of goods. There were business going on in various ways. And then I went down in the farms went down in the fields, visited in these farm homes, uh, down in the barn, saw the cows, the, the uh, hogs, saw the chickens, and saw uh, the produce, got into the marketing phase. Uh, there are problems they have there with reference to marketing their uh, crops, their grains, and their hay, and their meats. Senator, we're having a little trouble at home, apparently, about farm prices. Uh, how do you feel about that? They, are you satisfied with the present uh, farm price support program, or do uh, you think it has well, to be something Well, I'm pretty well satisfied with the one that's on the books now. I, I want this substantial, this program continued, a rigid price support for basic commodities that can be stored. I said in a speech in Mississippi last July that I believe that that program would come, either through this administration or another administration. I believe now that the, the next session of the Congress will enact a law that will be a substantially continuation, extending for at least two more years, the present rigid price supports for basic storable commodities. At 90% of parity. At 90% of parity. Well, I Senator, think that should be done. I believe it'll come to that. Senator, the Wisconsin election, which occurred while you were away probably, uh, indicated that the farmers, at least in Wisconsin, are not too satisfied that Secretary Benson feels it as they do about this matter. Uh, rather, they seem to feel more as you do. And there has been some call for Benson's resignation. What do you think about that? Well, I think this that a farm program will be enacted by the next session of the Congress that's somewhat contrary to the announcements made by Secretary Benson when he first took office. I, it'll be this 90% of parity for the basic storable commodities. Now, uh, I hope that he doesn't uh, quit or resign. I have too much respect for his ability and his fine character and his great sincerity to want him to resign. 
if he can uh, find a basis to serve on, if this new policy is uh, enacted, and I think he could, why, uh, he will doubtless continue. That's my opinion. You do feel, however, that his idea of more flexible supports will not prevail. Uh, that is correct. Yes, sir. I think we'll have the more rigid support. Well, Senator Benson, if uh, farm prices are so low these days, how do you account for the fact that uh, food prices here in the cities are so high? Well, I think that the selling the end of the game has been very, very effective. Now, those prices have not come down, even though the raw product to the, that the farmer has to sell has been greatly reduced, particularly with reference to meat. You know, we have high-powered uh, sales organization now, and they're very effective. And uh, the cost of processing and retailing, of course, is very high. Uh, but those prices uh, uh, are not reflected in the mm -hmm. retail trade. And mm -hmm. that's one reason why the farmer's caught. The retail prices are not down. He's caught between that squeeze. High production and low uh, produce. Well, thank you very much, Senator Stennis. It's been a great pleasure to have you here with us tonight. The opinions that you've heard our speakers express tonight have been entirely their own. The editorial board for this edition of the Longines Chronoscope was Larry Lasseur of the CBS Television News staff and Kenneth Crawford, Senior Editor of National Affairs for Newsweek magazine. Our distinguished guest was the Honorable John Stennis, Senator from Mississippi. If you were to ask, what's the secret of the greater accuracy and long life of Longines watches, we'd answer, Longines watches are better made. And we could prove it. Although you would have to examine piles of blueprints, read pages of figures and formulas, witness countless delicate measurements and tests. Now fortunately, there is an easier way. Qualified experts have compared Longines watches side by side with the best watches of the world time after time. The first time some 75 years ago. The most recent just yesterday, so to speak. And here are the results of their findings. 10 grand prizes and 28 gold medals from world's fairs and international expositions. Countless prizes and bulletins for accuracy from government observatories. Honors in every field of precise time. Now that's why in some 100 countries the world over, Longines watches are held in the highest esteem. The pleasure that comes from owning so distinguished a timepiece can be yours. For Longines watches are not expensive. You may buy and own or proudly give a Longines watch for as little as $71.50. Longines, the world's most honored watch, the world's most honored gift, premier product of the Longines Whitnor Watch Company. Since 1866, maker of watches of the highest character. We invite you to join us every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday evening at this same time for the Longines Chronoscope, a television journal of the important issues of the hour, broadcast on behalf of Longines, the world's most honored watch, and Whitnor, distinguished companion to the world honored Longines. This is Frank Knight, reminding you that Longines and Whitnor watches are sold and serviced from coast to coast by more than 4,000 leading jewelers who proudly display this emblem. Agency for Longines Whitnor watches.